Hello and welcome to the DV Test Podcast, episode three. Uh, today we have Alice Coat Duck and Bobololo, uh, the ones and onlys. Say hi, guys. Hello. Hello. All right, you could hear one of those two. Anyway. Um, so we're going to talk about lots of Nerf things, lots of YouTube things. It's going to be a great show. Uh, so let's quickly start with some intros. Uh, tell us who you are and what you do in the Nerf community in case people don't know. You can go first, Alice. Oh, um, I make YouTube videos and 3D print stuff that I sometimes sell when I feel like it. That's it, Bobo. It's you now. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was, I was wondering if there's anything else. It seems like you do more than that. But uh, I'm Bobo. I make YouTube videos on occasion, and uh, I'm just a part of the community. I'm here and there and stuff, and I go to events sometimes. Uh, yeah, that's, that's basically true. it. Uh, that's basically it. Okay. Good intros. Yeah. Good intros. Okay. Um, so uh, let's get right into it. You guys are both YouTubers. Uh, how is that going for you guys? Um, tell me about like uh, what kind of videos you guys have been uploading, what, guys, what kind of videos you guys have upcoming, that sort of thing. Talk about your experience on YouTube. You can just go first every time, Alice, because it's alphabetical. Oh, yeah? God damn it. See, it makes it easy. Um, yeah, okay. Um, oh, well, I just hit uh, 2,000 subscribers, so I, uh, I'll i have a video coming out to celebrate that, and by that I mean I should probably start thinking about making a video to celebrate that. And, um, but, uh, yeah, I've just really been working on my editing lately and trying to get things all smooth and nice and... Um, one of the, I think the last two videos that I'm like really proud of that I uploaded were um, my review of the Battle Racer, which Dennis actually you were in. I like um, that. That's a good video. Whoa. Yeah, and and Bobo wasn't because he didn't come up for the game. It's um, so far away. Yeah, well, um, actually, you know what? I looked it up. A flight uh, from you to me is a hundred dollars. You could have done it. I don't. I don't. I'll have that time. Boring. They're um, boring. And then I uh, I built up a, a strife that's particularly green that I'm very proud of. And I'm just sort of working on my editing and I'm really getting into the sort of filmmaking side of the thing and it's it's fun and I'm liking it. Okay. Uh, well, I uh, let's see here. What do I do on YouTube? I make videos mostly... A lot of reviews, which uh, I kind of want to break up with more projects, so I'm working on some projects, and uh, just trying to get stuff looking pretty. I want to be, I want to have the second prettiest shots in the nerfing community behind Out of Darts. That's kind of my my ultimate goal: is to just look as good, if not slightly worse, than Out of Darts, um, and to make more bills because I need more of them. I don't make enough. Uh, besides that... I think you guys both touched on something really interesting that uh, I think is not just YouTube but I've noticed from a lot of you, uh, Nerf YouTubers, and I guess YouTubers in general, is that everyone kind of starts with just like pointing their camera at a blaster at themselves and like it's a shitty camera and then like the further they get <laughs> into so it... True. They, like, get better editing, get better cameras, get better quality footage. Um, and, like, obviously their craft increases more, but, like, everyone sort of starts out at this, like, uh, I have a camera, I'm going to point it at myself, and let's hope something good happens. you got to start somewhere, and using what you have is the best solution to that. So work with what you got. I mean, I've seen articles where they gave photographers a really old crappy digital camera 
And we're like, take the best pictures you can with this. And they still come out amazing, like really good looking photos that utilize not, I don't want to say the crappiness of the camera, but they work around the crappiness of the camera. And as long as you can get some decent audio, yeah. which is really important, I cannot stress how important audio is. You can have a, a 144p video, and as long as the audio sounds pretty okay, you're golden. But uh, audio is important, and if you can make it look pretty, more power to you. So that's why, you know, I've been utilizing the uh, the slider cam and the rack focuses and trying to make it more interesting and visually appealing. That's why I have the lap mic and I'm doing all this stuff outside now is to try and make it just that bit better. I, should really, I should really make a slider. I think that'd make a good video. Plus, I don't want to buy one. You can make some some really janky ones out of PVC and whatnot, but... There's also some, what are they, like $40 ones on Amazon by like Newer, 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 whatever it's called. Newer? Yeah. I think it's Newer. Newer, I think, or something. Yes, yeah, so there's some companies that rebrand the crappy ones that you can find on like Banggood, which is where I got mine for free. Yeah, it but was like. really great. <laughs> yeah, but like I have a 3D printer and need excuses for content. So it just, you there know, you makes go. itself, basically. And. I didn't think I was going to use it that much. I use it so often. It's 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 a lot of fun to try and get beautiful sliding shots. I just need to find a way to like turn the camera now. When you Wait. did when you did your review of the slider, how did you get good sliding shots of the slider? Did I get good? Oh, that was all uh, by hand, like squatting in the backyard, trying to be really steady and hoping the neighbors weren't judging me. Bobo squats in the backyard. <laughs> That's like all my videos. I, I the things you don't see are like me looking out for neighbors because I've had some of them looking down at me like, "What is this person doing? Why does he have this toy?" Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Like I've never, I have never told this story, but this is the best time to tell it. I had, a, I was uh, doing some shooting with Pwn Saw to like, to, you know, test it out, make sure everything was working. And this guy, uh, there's like steps leading down to the backyard, and I hear this like, "What you doing?" And I was like, "Oh, I'm just you know messing around with this." I and mean, he's like, "What is that? Is that a Nerf gun?" And I was like, "Yeah." And I, I come up and I start talking about like how I do YouTube videos. He's like, "Don't tell anyone here, but I'm a porn star." I was like, "What?" <laughs> it's just so random. What? Yeah, it was the I don't know. I don't know. It was just, don't tell the neighbors. It's on the down low. I was like, okay. <laughs> just, out of nowhere, I met a porn star for the first time because through this hobby, I guess you can say. <laughs> the first time through this hobby. <laughs> gotcha. So yeah, that, I don't know. I feel like I, I have never told that story, but it's one of those weird kind of... This is why I'm afraid of my neighbors seeing me is because I'll find out more things like, I killed a man. It's like, all right, well, so long. I'm just going to go back inside now. Well, that like... That killed my story. I was just gonna say, like driving the battle racer around, I was getting some funny looks. But oh, like, that looks like so much fun, though. It was. It was so much fun. Um, and didn't make it into the video, but like, uh, when I was running around at the skate park, there was this like fourteen-year-old kid who would not give up trying to get my phone number. That's weird. It was really uncomfortable. Uh, but, yeah, everyone who's listening. Please don't be creepy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just PSA, stop being creepy. Yeah. Um, but no, like, when you when that kind of thing happens, like, when you're rolling down the street in a battle racer and a car drives by and looks at you like you're, like, losing it, you know, all you, all you can do is just, like, smile and wave and just keep going and pretend like nothing is wrong. I think and there's a difference between when you're in a public park because then it's an activity and you're with other people and by yourself looking weird. Yeah, you know, I was just driving down the road by myself, like taking it for a test drive. Like, but that seems, I don't know. Maybe that's just kind of like the, the weird perception is like, I am a tall, hairy, overweight man with a toy. You are slender lady in a battle racer. You probably pulled it off way better yeah, I mean, like, if I, I like, could. put my hair up and put on a hat, I could probably pass for, like, a 13-year-old boy. Like, that's But I feel like it's, market, it's, right? it's more, it's not as surprising. 
you know yeah, it's, fair it's like what is this kid doing and how many children are locked in his basement is how <laughs> i feel whenever i see someone looking at me doing this i mean that was my first impression when i started watching your no <laughs> no <laughs> stop i'm just normal well, we went we went really off topic. <laughs> yeah, we went way off the rails. Sorry there, Dennis. That is totally fine. That's why I like having more people on this show. Uh, we get some really interesting conversations rather than just me asking questions. What was the question? I totally forgot. How's YouTube, How's YouTube going? Something? Oh, uh, a okay, I guess. Neat. I mean, for you, it's just sort of coasting, right? Yeah, the uh, the next question that's on this list is what motivates you? <laughs> Nothing. <Which> is, <laughs> it's really true. But the it's I I have these way I guess we're going to the next question now, but what motivates you to make videos? Um I just let Dennis talk for a no, second. This is my show now. Um Dennis, do you want to officially ask the question? No, you you got it covered. We're good. Alright. So um so I don't know if this happens first. for anyone else, but, um, I know, I'm sorry, Alice. I, it's, it's my turn now, or do you want to go? Yeah, no, it's your turn. You All right, ahead. so, I feel rude now. Um, so, like, my motivation, so, uh, there's, there's two parts to this. Um, Nerf is, like, the only creative outlet I have. Um, art school really ruined, like, doodling and drawing and stuff for me because it was every day you have to do these exercises no you, you you know you get a little bit of creativity but it's like you have to stay within these guidelines you're not allowed to do this and I, I used to like drawing casually and just stuff but that really ruined all of that so i i can't get back into it unless it's drawing my girlfriend's facial outline really well and then just destroying everything that's inside of it for the giggles um so, like, Nerf is the last creative outlet I have. At the same time, when you do it for so long, you just lose all motivation, and you want to stop. And when, on top of that, when you have to, like, do it, you know, people are expecting a video every week, I get, like, really anxious about it, and it's like, oh, my God, I have to put something out. I have to do this. Uh, it's raining today. Okay, maybe tomorrow. It's raining today. Oh, my gosh, I have to get this video out in two days. It's raining again. Oh my god, I have to get a video out. And then it's like, you forget about it, and you just take like a few days off, and it's really relaxing. And that's just how it's been. It's like, you do it for so long, and I just want to break, and to not have to worry about getting things out on time. And I know it affects my YouTube channel, I know it affects all the analytics and stuff, but it's just like, not having to do things because people want you to, or because you have a schedule is really nice, and you can just sit back work on a project without the stress of a deadline because I absolutely hate deadlines. And it just feels so good. And so that's the current state I'm in is like, what motivates you? Just doing things on my own leisurely schedule. That uh, is really touching and explains a lot about why your channel is so... Uh, you know, Unreliable? In inconsistent. <laughs> uh, but I'm still going to make fun of you for not making <laughs> videos. See, that's okay. You're allowed to do it, but then there are the, the fans that are, like, actually angry about it. It's kind of like those people that are like, why do I have to watch YouTube ads? It's like, because you get free content, and it only yeah. takes five seconds? Like, calm down. And yeah. it's, what are your videos? It's like, you don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on in your life. Like, I don't yell at you for stupid stuff, but just every now and then I need a break, and then I come back full force. Like, the, uh, Ponesaw and Pink Miss were whipped out, like, I think two months from each other. So I was working on them yeah. at the same time. And that was what got me back into the modding from that kind of low motivation point. Was, let's do something for end war, bam, back into it. So I don't know if it works like that for anyone else, but it's like, every now and then I just need some me time and to not worry. Because, you know, also, Adpocalypse, which doesn't really affect the toy stuff too much, but also, like... You put a lot of time into reviews, and then they don't get as many views as you want, and that's really just... It kills your morale. Yeah. Like you do a really good job, and then, like, only 2,000 people watch it, and you're like, well, that was kind of pointless. Like, the information's out there, but come on. Yeah, um... And that's really interesting. You, you touched on, like, you know, 
people not like people being annoying because you not making content constantly. And I think you touched on like watching ads and stuff. And it's actually really interesting because I had somebody who is not big into YouTube tell me how dumb they thought Patreon was. And that it was like, they're saying, oh, well, you were providing it to me for free before. Why Why do I have to pay for it now? And that's just sort of You don't have to. That's, yeah. The whole point. No one's forcing you to do it. Like, you know, GoFundMes. I've seen some really dumb GoFundMes. Really dumb ones. Yeah. But no one's forcing you to donate. Yeah. And for people... I know, uh, who is it? That one game critic guy. I forget his name. Uh, the Jimquisition. That guy. Um, he doesn't put ads on his videos. So that's how he makes money off of them. But for other people, it's like, because you like what they do. Here's a little bit of extra money. Maybe there's an incentive. But yeah. people complain about this stuff. It's just like, no one's forcing you to pay. No one's making you do this. It's for the people that want to support outside of watching a few ads. The end. That's it. Yeah. So I guess to sort of uh, answer my own side of that question, um, as per what motivates me, um, honestly, it's just fun. I like doing it. I mean, I, uh, you know, there, there are plenty of YouTubers who make their living off of YouTube. And that sounds just dandy because I really enjoy making YouTube videos, but I don't make any money off of YouTube. I've literally not collected any money from YouTube. Um, Gotta start somewhere. Yeah. Um, but, you know, like, I don't know. I just do it because it's fun. It's, I, I like doing it. I like, you know what? I really like watching other people's content mm -hmm. and you know, there, there will never be enough of it. There will never be enough good modding content out there that I could sit down at the beginning of a day and just keep watching modding content. I haven't seen yet until the end of the day. So like, you know, it's, it's my small contribution to the people who want to lazily sit around and watch other people mod or who want inspiration to make their own stuff and are looking for that. So I just make whatever I want to make or if I've got a, a client, like if I've got a commission, then I'll make that and then post that. And Or sometimes I won't post it because it's sitting on my desktop taking up space and I haven't uploaded it yet. I think contribute. I feel like I don't have enough people in my content feed. Like I'm always looking for more people to watch, and just the people who do it on such a consistent schedule. Like I have so much respect for them, and it's really nice to have good content. You know, good modding stuff out there because there. You know, as you said, I don't think there, there's not enough of it, and you know, someone who's listening to this who just likes to mod casually could be the next person to do it. Yeah. You know, it could be anyone. It could even yeah, exactly. be you. Thanks, Bobo. Oh, boy. All right. Uh, I was saying that to the viewers. Oh, okay. <laughs> you already do that. I was like, thanks, Dick. I'm already <laughs> doing that. Oh, so I don't... I, this is this is just kind of a, an out there question. Does... Does watching click spring videos, if you watch it in the way of, like, how many shots did he do? How long does it take to make an edit? Does it give you anxiety? Because it gives me anxiety. Uh, no. Um, uh, that's, um, I don't know. I know Dennis said we could swear here, but I really don't think that my feelings towards click spring are appropriate. <laughs> like, like, for anyone except my, like, close intimate partners, like... If you don't know who Clickspring is, his channel is one of the best maker channels. It's amazing. Definitely the best machining channel. It's like, so, oh god, everything about his form. videos is beautiful. But it's I'm like, so good. It's just like if I tried to do that with a mod video, I would, I would just cry the whole time. Yeah, uh, he's one of the few people I actually support on Patreon because, you know, not because I don't think Patreon is good, but because I am. Because he's uh, worth it. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm <laughs> poor and he's worth it. Yeah, he's so worth it. Seriously, his channels are beautiful, and he's working on the uh, Antikythera 
device, if I'm saying. Mechanism. Yeah. yeah it just, everything made of brass. Everything hand. It, it's ridiculous. He's like, I made this tool to do this one thing. It's like, oh my god, dude. Just buy it, please. Yep. <sighs> what were we talking about again? Uh, what motivates you? Which is funny, because the next question is, what YouTubers do you watch? Click Spring. Constantly. Click Spring all day, every day. Like with my hand down my pants. Like... <laughs> <laughs> oh man, like uh, who are some of your favorites? Just on your list of subscriptions, who are some of your favorites? I like how Bobo is asking that question. Yeah, well, Dennis over here is all quiet. We're segueing so perfect into everything. Oh yeah. Okay, so Dennis, who do you watch? I want to know. Uh, I need new stuff. Actually, my most recent subscription, I think, was your suggestion of uh, comment etiquette. And Yay! Um, Big money, Salvia. I, I basically, I feel like at this point, I've basically started using YouTube almost exclusively for nerf content. I honestly don't know how many non-nerf or non-3D printing YouTubers I watch. I actually have to go check that. You know, I was kind of thinking about it, and um, a lot of the YouTubers I watch, I'm, like, really good friends with. So I won't, like, I don't know, I would feel weird mentioning one of them. Just say Peter then... Shreeple. What? Just say Peter Shreeple already. I actually wasn't. I mean, I was just oh. scrolling through the list, and, like, I don't know, I, I get, like, a couple of the ones that I don't know, like, personally. Uh, it would be, like, Laura Kampf. Like, I love Laura Kampf. We watch some of the same channels. Like, we had one day where we were just going through everything, and we watch a lot of the same stuff. And, um... Crap, I was gonna say, uh... Uh, Peter Brown. But it love occurs Peter to me Brown. that, like... I'm friends with William Osmond, who's friends with Peter Brown. So, like, it's kind of, like, close to the rule there. Yeah. Um... I'm not sure. I don't know. I really love maker channels, and I, like, a lot of nerf channels fit that category, so I watch a lot of nerf channels, but, you know, there's also ones that don't, like, um, Peter Brown is, like, wood turning most of the time, some of the time. There's a lot weird. of wood turning stuff that I watch. Yeah. I will never, ever wood turn in my life unless I become some, like, rich white guy, and I just, I don't know, there's something so nice about them, and, uh, Math Matthias Wandel is just oh, yeah. he's just stupidly smart and to see his process of like I'm gonna take the long route to do this it's like okay I'm cool with that let's do it everything's made, made of wood thing. even this dowel is machined from wood I'm like okay that dude made his own baseboards like yeah come on. it's weird um oh, oh you know what uh, sorry, uh, talking about um, Matthias Wandel and uh, his channel is originally called Wood Gears. Um, oh, yeah, that's right. But uh, no, um, somebody who took a lot of inspiration from him is uh, it's actually a band called Wintergarten. I um, love Wintergarten. I actually bought their uh, their album today. Oh yeah. I Tell was, me how I it just, is. I might buy it too. Um, I was watching a uh, an old, not old, but like maybe two years ago, a video of them playing at like a venue, yeah. and I think it was called like Star Chaser. Yeah, that uh, that song. Star I was just Chaser like this or something. Yeah. Uh, Star Machine two thousand. I was like, yeah, this is pretty go. cool. I, I like yeah. this is background music. So I bought the whole album. Uh, but they, it's, um, it's like six bucks on Bandcamp. Yeah, but they uh, they made the Marble Machine, which was the X. awesome. Oh yeah, I love Marble Machine the process X. for I'm making so the X one is really cool. Yeah, yeah, I highly recommend that. Um, what nerfers I'm... though? I feel like <laughs> it's just like what nerfers uh, do you watch? I mean, you know, the obvious would be like uh, I don't know. I feel it's weird to say just like the the kind of the big presence, even like even if they have a lower sub count than some people, like the Jangular. Yeah. I love his channel, and I feel like he has kind of the name built for himself. You know. He I have this weekend nerf that I really appreciate. Keeps me up to date with a lot of stuff. I have a a, uh, a picture of Dennis laying on my couch watching this weekend nerf on my TV. That's hot. <laughs> uh, this weekend nerf is the only like 
YouTube show slash Jingler's channel is the only one that I watch religiously. Like, I, as soon as it comes out, I, like, make my way to a computer. The only times I've missed it is if it comes out while I'm in the middle of an HVZ Invitational, and then it's the first thing I do <laughs> when I get home. I mean, like, no. it's just, it keeps me up to date. It's well done. It's it's paced really nicely. Because, yeah. you know, there's, there's Facebook groups and Reddit groups. And then, obviously, make Test Battle because they're, like, the big name now. One of the big names in Nerf. Uh, who else? Just the Jolt's fun to watch. Uh, one thing that I just thought of uh, because of the what I said about Jangular is, um, are there any YouTubers, Nerf or otherwise, that you can confidently say that you've watched every single one of their videos? Easily. Yes. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to start off with Andrew Huang. I just love his, his like, personality. Very educational, but, like, some dude you could hang out with. Sorry, I thought that was... Was that narrowed down to nerfers or just YouTubers uh, nerf, in Nerfers or otherwise, I think is what oh, I said. okay. That's what I heard. Uh, Binging with Bobbish is, like... Uh, oh, if you yeah. want to talk about a channel that I will throw down anything to watch, Binging with Bob. I love his channel so much. No. Yeah. Uh, who else? Boy in a Band. Love Boy in a Band. Uh, I'm not gonna lie to you. If I watch a like, if I if I watch a Nerf YouTuber like frequently, I will have seen all of their videos. Like Bobo, I think I've seen all of your videos. Yes. Like even dating back to the old shit. Like, yes, my horrible stuff. Yes. I don't remember if it was in one of your videos or Nom's videos, but I have an image of you licking <laughs> Drax and I see primary in my head. And I'm uh, sure that I've I seen that. A like, long, that wasn't I've a licked weird long dream. shots. Long shots are the ones I've licked. I think Nom was the one who licked the, uh, what was it, the blood something? Bloodborne, I think. Blood, yeah. What else is there? Uh, I like Defunct Land. It's about, like, theme park rides that got torn down. It's really weird. That like, is uh, weird. They give the history and like the build up of theme park rides and then why they were put out of commission. I that that's that's just it. <laughs> There's something really interesting about it. Uh DIY perks. Yep, I was gonna say that earlier. Yeah. DIY so trying good. really fun channel. Uh I'm a big H three H three fan. Tom Scott. Tom Scott. Oh my god, I love Tom Scott. Yeah. Uh, Forgotten Weapons. Uh, if you're into PUBG, Fuglet is really good. Wow, we are so off topic at this point. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, uh, George Rockall makes really nice stuff. Grand Illusions. You know, I... I always get myself trapped in a loop of Grand Illusions, but I, he I was never at Toy find Fair. that I like them. It was at Toy Fair when I went, and I didn't see him. I was very upset. Oh, that is disappointing. I know. I was, like, actively looking for him, and someone was like, Bubba, he's at Toy Fair. I was like, what? <laughs> so I was just looking around for him. I couldn't find it. Uh, iDubs, for Dennis. sure. I have to tell you, I think you picked a bad question because between me and Bobo, we will be here <laughs> will all right. day. Like, all, right, all day. Rapid fire them off. iDubs released the hottest stitch track of the year. Go watch it. It's so good. Uh, Internet Historian, Jack's Films, Jell Apocalypse, uh, Jeremy Schmidt, Jimmy DeResta, uh, Kyle Toth. Holy shit, Kyle Toth is amazing. Uh, Chris Salamone. I don't know if you watch him, Bobo, but he's super good. Yes. I, I always call him Salome. That's kind of strange. Uh, Darvin Orber, I really like her. She's awesome. Uh, I said Laura Kampf earlier, and I'm just going to say it again, because Laura Kampf. Mike Boyd. Oh, yeah, you know, I started watching him recently, and I really like it. Uh, Alex Steele. Uh, I just subbed to him. Yeah, uh, I've been subscribed to Alex Steele for about a year now. Nerd City, uh, if you want to watch someone just like... Crack down on a YouTuber. Nerd City is great. He did the uh, Daddy of Five stuff and decimated. Oh, so beautiful. I have no idea what that. Oh, man. I'll tell you all about Daddy of Five. Uh, I watch people who go after like really crappy YouTube stuff, like iDubs with his content cop and stuff 
Nerd City also does kind of a content cop, but it's like 30 minute episodes where he just it's really good. Uh, really Aeromech, good. definitely. Totally yeah. Just He's okay. Him. Yeah, there we go. Uh, Peter Brown for sure. Okay, for we Disney. really need to get off this topic because we could genuinely go all day. Uh, run for the cube. Okay. Don't. Uh, that's a joke. For the, don't, don't, don't for the past couple episodes, every time we've gone over this, um, I've always said that I'll link to everyone you, that uh, the person mentioned. The <laughs> Good luck. Nope. Not, nope. Happening. <laughs> nope. not happening. Uh, if you guys send me a Good. list, of maybe. Soviet Womble. That's the last one I'm going to say. Inspire to make. I'm good now. Soviet Womble. Oh, there's so many more I want to say, though. Okay, ask us another question. This is going to get <laughs> bad, like, real fast. Donkey! <laughs> um, you suck at cooking, your movies suck. Until you ask the question, I'm just going to keep listening. Alright, yeah, keep doing that. Give me a sec. Uh, Townsend's Total Biscuit, if you're into game right. stuff. Today we're I found switching, out We're nice. switching back to Nerf. Yo. Okay. This old Tony. So you guys, Michael Reeve. <laughs> so you guys mentioned quite a bit of Nerf YouTubers, although not that many in, compared to all the non-Nerfers. But anyway, um, yeah. Wh which Nerf YouTubers do you feel like contribute the most to the community as a whole? Because there's a lot that just like make content Ooh. and then leave it at that. They make content, they don't really interact with the community. But who do you feel like contributes to the community, is really interactive. I feel like you two are definitely uh, ones that interact a lot with the community, at least on Facebook. 100%. Uh, but, like, talk about some other ones that, you, that you've that you had good experiences with, that sort of thing. 100% gun versus gun. <laughs> uh, I was going to say uh, foam data services, but, you know. Yes, absolutely. Uh, he is... Uh, I would say uh, him and the whole Brit nerf community are really yeah. important. Not yeah. only for their testing methodology, which is amazing that, that they do all that stuff, because I can only imagine how much money goes into it. But um, yeah. also because they're basically the last forum. The last nerf forum that we have. Which kind of sucks. Wow, that's, uh, uh, I'm not sure. Um, uh, you've been doing a lot of testing lately, which I'm, uh, well, I mean, that's kind of the point of your, never mind. Um, Dennis, obviously, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> uh, uh, Jangular, absolutely. Jangular. I think we touched on that earlier. Um, I mean, this is, I'm trying to think of people who aren't like, you know, like Drac, because he started the SCNC and all that yeah. stuff. I'm trying to think of people that, some people may not know. Uh, and that's the thing is like YouTube is such a weird thing because it's like we have people on YouTube, but then you have people who are solely into posting pictures. Yeah, that's true. And there are a lot of there are a lot of really talented people out there who, you know, kind of post like one off things or maybe post two or things that are like, holy shit, that's anymore. amazing. But then like we don't see him ever again. Like uh, Eli Wu, he made um uh, Echelon for Drac and Hex. Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, and then he just like vanished. And I actually talked to him today. Um, he still got me on Facebook. We just talked for a brief minute, and he just he just disappeared. Like, you know, there's uh, there's also I, the old channels that just don't post anymore, like Nerfomania. Oh yeah, stopped. yeah. In his day, Nom was, you know, like awesome. Whole, but. And it's crazy to me that like homemades have kind of died off along with his with his leave like I, I, they're not yeah. correlated but it's it's one of those like i don't know people just go away and then other parts of the the nerfing community are going away as well it's like nom it's leaving of... was an omen oh no uh modman was also a big scnc homemade guy and he's just been like college and stuff yeah. real job and it like he did really good work he was the next nom he was he yeah. was like the legacy continued and then School, which is a lot of the excuse and a lot of the reasons why people stop. Yeah. So on that topic, uh, do you guys have, like, nerfers that you wish were YouTubers? Because I know you kind of mentioned a couple that you... Uh... Mr. Heath. So yeah, if you guys want to talk about that. Yeah. If Mr. Heath made mod videos, I would watch all of them over and over because his work is incredible. 
and I want to know yeah. how he does all of it. Yeah, absolutely. Exiled as well. Yeah. Um, I had one in my brain, and then, and then Bobo said Mr. Heath, and I had lost it. Sorry. Uh, I'm just going to go to the Reddit. <laughs> yeah, there's so many talented people. That just go to like, all the competitions. Honestly, yeah. like the, the competitions is like I want to know how that was made more than just pictures. Um, I can never think of names, but I can think of just pictures in my head. Describe these pictures in your head. Really well made <laughs> stuff. <laughs> That's it. I wish uh, I wish Jangular was modding. We need to get him into it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I'm terrible with names. That's why yeah, I've I totally that. lost it. Like I, I had I a that. great thing in my head, and I just. That's why I like that that subscription feed list because you can just scroll down all of it and name off stuff. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the the two that I wrote down on the sheet are Mr. Heath Pants. I think is his. his Reddit name and exiled. Yeah. I want to know how they just do everything. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Uh, let's go on and move away from YouTube now that we're 36 minutes into this. Gasp. <laughs> uh, and talk a little bit about a little bit about actually playing Nerf. Um, so mm -hmm. Bobo, I know a little bit about your Nerf history from various other interviewed things and question videos that you've done. Um, yeah, I know you started with HVZ and then moved into NIC and Superstock. Um, okay. Alice, do you want to briefly go over how you got into the hobby? And then I'll ask the question, I guess. Um, hmm, so uh, I guess I first got into the hobby because it was one of those YouTube spirals that I was like, I wonder how, and then I clicked, and then I didn't stop clicking for like three days. <laughs> um, and uh, and then on a whim, I actually uh, shot a message over to Drac and mentioned that I had a, a large format 3D printer and uh, some modeling experience and that there were a couple blasters that I wanted to print and... I didn't expect him to get back to me because he was a pretty big YouTube channel. It was just kind of an on a whim thing at like four in the morning. And the next day he got back to me like at like nine in the morning and like was like, I want to call you. Here is my phone number. Um, uh, and so then he sort of dragged me kicking and screaming into the hobby. Um, and then uh, I guess my first event was actually uh, NVZ last year which is kind of a big event to start out as but um there isn't a lot of stuff where i am it's it's kind of it's all sort of a long drive from me and i don't have a car so i go to any event that i can um mostly based on whether or not somebody has you know offered to get me there um but since then i've, I've been to probably um, seven or eight HVZ games, and uh, there's some Superstock and NIC stuff up in Toronto that I've gone to a couple times, I think. Um, but uh, in the time that I'm not doing that, I'm either doing builds for clients or doing builds for myself or making videos. So, yeah. Uh, and Bobo, I kind of went over your history, but if you want to go into a little bit more depth before the next question, feel free to. Um, it was HVZ back in 2009 when it got brought to SCAD, which was kind of like a, a, a big deal. It was like, what? oh my gosh, like, what is this game? It's not... you know, art kids. I'll just, just simply art kids and fun games or weird games. We're totally into them. Uh, so a lot of people got into that. I, I don't remember how I found it. I, I don't know what the thought process was, but I had a long shot and I discovered you could open it because me being me, I never really thought about opening too many things because it never, I never really needed to. So seeing there was a community full of people that were just like, screw this, I'm going to make it better. Uh, was really cool. So 
found Nerf Haven, got into that, found the, I think it was through the HVZ forums, that might have been it, um, got really into the HVZ forums, went to my first NIC game, uh, same year, I think it was, something like that, no, two years later, one year later, something like that, um, brought all my HVZ stuff and was clearly outmatched by the NIC stuff, and that's what got me into the NIC, uh, which... I'm a big fan of, and there's not enough people who do NIC stuff. I mean, it's not for everyone, but I think more people should be doing it. So that basically brings me to the question that this kind of led up to. Uh, NIC, Superstock, or HVZ, which one do you guys prefer? Why? Uh, talk a little bit about that, that I guess. Um, I forgot I was going first. Um, so... I don't know that I don't know if I could pick one. Like, I don't know if I could say like, I like this one better or this one better because I genuinely just enjoy them all. And I, I don't, there's no real ranking in my head. I, I like, um, I like HVZ and Superstock and NIC and yeah, I mean, I just like them all. I think I would actually be more inclined to, like, if, if you were to say, okay, there's a game this day and this day, like, or, like, you know, if there's a game on the same day, do you want to go to the HVZ or the, you know, just war? Uh, my choice would come down to who was at each of them, like, who I would want to spend the day with rather than, you know, what I would want to spend it doing. I'm going to go with an IC. <laughs> uh, HVZ is really dependent on who's running it and who's going. I've been to some really bad HVZ games, and it's one of those feelings of why did I waste my time? Uh, my time was wasted, and this sucks. Um, and I see stuff. I would, I, I would definitely pick over Superstock because it's faster. Um, you can, you're, you're not as close to one another. And it feels faster paced and the darts are more accurate, which is like one of the big benefits to it for me is because if I'm shooting just, you know, bow berries, koosh, waffles, whatever, it just doesn't feel as accurate and you have to shoot more stuff at someone to hit them. Whereas an IC is like you can shoot a dart right where around where you want it, depending on the quality of the dart. So I love the NIC. It's the most consistent fun I've had. Uh, HVZ is just mostly for the people. End War was mostly for the people that were going, like Dennis and Alice here. So that was, you know, it, it's more of a let's get together and hang out and talk and have some fun. And if the game sucks, well, we all got to hang out anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah, that's probably a big part of why I said that. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, a lot of us would agree on the whole who's going decides it more so than what the event is. Um, but yeah, uh, glad you guys have some interesting answers to that. Um, Bobo, so uh, one of the, since you like NIC so much, um, one of the things that was talked about previously on both the previous episodes was Ultra Stock, uh, which has been bounced around a couple times in lots of different chats, Reddit, whatever. Um, which kind of bringing back Superstock into NIC, uh, where they split off 10 so years ago because of HVZ and the difference in blasters and all that fun stuff, um, is bringing back Superstock into NIC because we're finally getting to the point where Superstock blasters are getting competitive in NIC wars, where NIC was kind of like the 200 to 250 FPS area, and now we're getting... Uh, Caliburn, which uses stock darts at like 200 FPS, yeah. and we're getting uh, stuff from Open Flywheel Project and similar pro uh, things that are getting like 150 to 170, and Phil's uh, soon upcoming Eclipse, which uh, he said had gotten ranges of like 170 to 180 and so on. Um, Jeez. So like we are bridging <laughs> that gap. So how do you feel about the concept of Ultra Stock? of just bringing Superstock back in NIC? Do you think they should stay separate? Do you think merging it's a it's, good idea? I, I've seen people do really well with Superstock stuff during NIC. Like, I've gotten my ass taken out 
by kids with lightly modified stampedes because their strategy was better than mine. Um, so it, it's not like a weird thing to me. It's not like it's it's it feels slightly out of place when you say it, but at the same time, it's like oh, here's a cage that shoots really far and really hard, and you know if if someone wants to run it, go for it. I think. What makes NIC NIC to me is the use of Stefan's, uh, actual Stefan's, not the half-length dart stuff. Um, you know, more so, more hands on I guess, with the creation of the blaster, you know, using like PVC and wood and stuff like that. But um, if someone can make a build that can compete with that stuff, like, use it all you want. Like, I'm not going to complain about it. It's just, it, it's kind of weird to, to see blasters that i've i i i've seen for like hvz use where they only go like 55 feet shooting like 150 it's so weird to me uh i don't know like if you can bring more people into the nic i'm all for it if that means using some ridiculously overloaded rapid striker strife yeah i mean um uh, I did my first NIC war with the, at the time, very proto, proto strife, which is my 3D printed crossbow strife integration. Um, and uh, I actually, um, it was down to me and another guy, and the other guy was using an actual crossbow. Um, so it was kind of like, you know, battle versus Wait, old, new crossbow. Actual crossbow? I know you want to burn it, Bobo. No, oh, I think. <laughs> For some reason, my head was like, the thing the medieval knights and archers use. I was like, how the yeah. hell does that work? <laughs> um, <laughs> All right, never mind. But uh, no, we were down to, uh, it was just the two of us. We both had one life. And um, uh, he shot the tarp beside me, and it ricocheted and hit me in the hand hard enough that I actually dropped my blaster from the ricochet. And he was like, oh, it's a bounce. It doesn't count. We can, like, you know, keep going if you want. And I was like, nah, if it hit me hard enough that I dropped my blaster, it, <laughs> it counts. Like, so I, I took That sounds it. pretty hefty. Yeah, it it hurt a lot. I mean, up in Canada, you know, there are still people, like, like we still allow people to show up with um, uh, Stefans that have lead fishing weights in the tip. Like, Three O's? I, I honestly don't know. I just I think those you know, are called three O's. Well, it depends on the fishing weight, but three O's is like the above the glue dome is the three O, and then the seven O is above the three O. Well, I can tell you, it it hurts like a bit. Oh yeah, that's uh, that's some Forsaken one. Angel stuff right there. Yeah, uh, it's, I know it's you the Canadians same group that hard. he used to be part of. Um, but I got shot in the stomach from like fifty feet by a four B. Um, oh yeah, that will, with one of those. that will mess you up. That was a welt for at least two weeks. I, uh, I, I based was the, on the ground after I got the wrecked like, war around the Canadian stuff. Nice. Because uh, back in the day when Make It Go, who I miss very, very much, his channel was, speaking of channels that, uh, that were influential and stuff, uh, Make It Go had an amazing tutorial. Um, him and Forsaken Angel like rocked the Canadian scene with ridiculous builds. And you also have headhunters, which I love the idea of. Um, you, could, you can only tag someone out by shooting them in the head. So, <laughs> so dumb. It's um, so Canadian and I love it. So uh, there's actually a war coming up and um, we're not like super certain and guaranteed, but like, we think that both F.A. and Make It Go are going to show up. Oh, my God. I'm not they, sure. Uh, like, we're not no, sure. they better. They better. But, uh, I really yeah. I want to meet Make It Go so bad. I found out that Make It Go is actually subscribed to my channel. And I, I had freaked a fan out the day moment. he subbed to me. Yeah, I, I had a fan moment. shot of it. I, I was like screaming i texted the girlfriend and was like oh my god make it go sub to me yeah. it was like the first big milestone for me it was amazing i i did that exact same thing and everybody was like what what are you talking about who is that <laughs> exactly I'm like, god yep. damn it <laughs> yep oh that was such a good day yep me
All right, so uh, another aspect of modding, um, kind of leading off of that, um, is what a lot of people have come to talk about as uh, kit modding, which instead of like going and finding parts and like taking a long ass time to like build blasters, you kind of have like all these drop in kits. Uh, Alice actually being one of the providers of that, and that uh, you make flywheel cages that are basically a drop-in part. You just replace one part with yours and you have it. Um, and like you, you upgraded your blaster, your blaster now shoots considerably better. Um, so I feel like Alice probably uh, has a positive opinion of this overall, but I'm going to ask anyway. Uh, do you guys think that kit modding, um, not, not just like body kits, but kits in terms of like internals, um, has an overall like positive effect on the community? negative effect uh do you like where it's going do you like w or would you rather return to a simpler time where you had to go try every spring in the hardware store until you figure out which one fits so um i don't know i make the parts that i think are would, would be incredibly difficult to to make otherwise like if you were going to hand manufacture a flywheel cage like like, good luck. Um, uh, by the way, if anybody does that, genuinely, I would love to see that. That would be awesome. Um, but I don't know. I think that they are not necessarily a takeover. Like, I don't think that they are something that has to come in and wipe out hand modding. I know that it, I know that there are, you know, it has done that, but you know, in some cases it has done that, but um, I, don't, I don't think that they are a horrible bad thing, but I also think that, like, you know, building stuff by hand, building stuff, like, um, I know Nom used to make the uh, the really awesome long shot uh, pump kits, and those were super cool. Oh, uh, yeah, I forgot um, about those. Yeah, and I think that that kind of modding is the stuff that you can really learn from and the stuff that you can, you know, just do by yourself and gain experience building something It is, And I, I guess personally, I do make parts that are designed to be sort of drop-in parts, but I mean, for me... That is like the really hard part. That's making the parts, like designing the parts to to print and drop in, and um, and so for me, that is kind of what it is. And I have never really put that much emphasis on selling them. It's mostly because I like building stuff for myself and for other people, and I like having good parts to do it. So I design them and make them myself, and that's part of why I don't normally buy stuff from other people, because. I like doing it myself. But with that being said, you know, like I, um, I currently have a commission for a, uh, I think it's a, I think it's a scar kit. Um, and it's just the, the F10 five by five, um, scar kit, because I think it would be really fun to throw it in and, you know, drop it in, paint it up, have some fun. Um, and I actually took that commission because it's from somebody that I uh, have worked with in the past. Um, so I guess I don't think that drop-in kits mean that you can't make stuff yourself, and making stuff yourself doesn't mean that you can't, you know, do a drop-in kit. Like, uh, Mr. Nathan, for instance, uh, uses a bunch of drop-in parts on his Hellhound, which is, like, the epitome of something, mm -hmm. like, completely like hand manufactured it's like gorgeous you know, like that dude took a centurion chopped it up into like a hundred pieces and glued <laughs> it back together into a different centurion like it's it's, it's what like <laughs> it looks gorgeous and it's like like how um but yeah I, I think that it's not there's a lot of people that that say things like oh, you know, like, I, I hate that drop-in kits are showing up because that means that people stop really modding, and it's not really modding. And, and you know, you're right. You can take, like, eight different drop-in kits and make something that's entirely not, like, 
hand done, but you can also mix and match. You can do, you know, hand built internals on a Springer and then throw on a body kit. And then like you can do an integration and throw in drop in parts. It's like it compensates for whatever you're not that good at. And the end result is we end up with better performing, more attractive blasters. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bitch about it. Damn, that was good. <laughs> uh, I have a slightly different take on it. Uh, you brought up a lot of good points. Um, my, it, this feels so like a question that you would ask when like Orange Mod Works first came on the scene because that was, at least, uh, from my experience, when the the kit versus you know is it good is it bad argument really started heating up you know because it was like oh the the guys who are coming out from the old nerf haven i don't want to just put it on nerf haven but like the the old modders were saying like this is this is like cheating uh, maybe not cheating but this is like uh this is it's not hand made and it's not like real modding because someone's already done it for you and blah 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 but i feel like nowadays it there's so many parts made by a bunch of different people who you know that provide actually good things like uh, someone who wants a stock cage uh, who doesn't want to use a stock cage well what are you gonna do other than buy you know a new cage or something uh to the person who wants to make a uh as you said uh, nam was selling those those pump grits it's like what if you don't have the tools to make it well then you buy a kit with one because that's what you want i mean you can make a janky mod but what if you want it to look good as well um i think i think it's also made it easy for people who are just getting to the hobby who want something nice to easily get and make it because you know if you're if you're trying to get this is just a weird scenario but if you're trying to convince your friends like check out this hobby it's easier to convince them if you have something that looks nice or shoots really well other than you know stocky nerf blaster because you know people judge we have judgy people in the world um i think what happens to hinder the the modding community and just modding in general is when you may and I, I just this is a specific example and it 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 reminds me of DLC in a way like the bad type of DLC the alpha kit and the omni kit where you have to buy the alpha kit first and then buy a kit with like two more parts in it to get the kit that you want so instead of spending like twenty seven dollars for just the omni kit you have to spend 28 for the alpha and then another 26 for the parts that make it into an omni. I think that hinders modding because you're paying for things you shouldn't have to pay extra for. Because you're not going to use the alpha kit. You want the omni kit. I mean, you can switch back to the alpha kit, but to make someone pay for something that they're probably not going to use is really shady. Yeah, and I agree. That's what I think hinders is when you start doing shady stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, back in the day when reverse plungers were like the main thing, uh, you know, I could understand when people said, oh, it's, it's affecting modding, it's hurting modding, uh, you know, cause th it was such a hands-on thing and change is bad and get off my lawn. But if you want to make a blaster that shoots really well now, I feel like you kind of have, you don't have to, but it's so easy and really helps to get a part made by someone else. Especially with 3D printing. Yeah. And, uh, I just, something that occurred to me that I wanted to touch on was like, I, um, uh, I, I don't know if anybody saw the, the video, but I sent a bunch of parts to, uh, to foam data services. Um, and actually part of the reason why I started doing, um, uh, why I started doing what I do now was because I kept seeing um, the really old, uh, I think it was the BSUK motor cover. And I don't feel bad saying that it looked like crap because oh, they blocky. know and they've replaced it at this point. Have they? Um, I think so, yeah. I don't believe you. Um, I, that was my sure first ever motor cover. something a lot better. Uh, but like, I kept seeing like builds from, you know, amazing painters like Tom and then, 
you know, seeing like the super blocky motor cover on it, which was all we had at the time. Like, you know, yep. and it was good uh, for what I, it was. But... I don't think they've changed it. Oh, oh they haven't? And they've rounded the edges, I think, a little bit. Okay, well, now I feel like an asshole. Sorry, BSU. I mean, it's um, compared to a lot of other people, like Jace 3D, you're going to pay more for it, but it looks so good. Um, Yeah, and so, like, I really wanted to. Like, I kept seeing those builds, and they just. The motor covers just felt so out of place, so I started making my own. And then I, you know, when I was sending a package to Tom, I was like, okay, I'm going to include, like, 10 Rapid Strike covers and, like,. I think I included, like, 14 pusher covers for the Rapid Strike or something. And then, like, a bunch of Strife covers and a bunch of stuff, because I'm like, your work is beautiful. Please use something as beautiful. Like, you know, like, use something that 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 fits on the blaster and, like, blends in and, and isn't sticking out, because it's just the work is so good. And, yeah, I don't know. That's why I sent Tom, like, <laughs> man, if I was just, like, selling those parts, it would probably be, like, $200 worth of parts. <laughs> like, yeah. So that kind of brings me to the next question. Um, when you mod your personal blasters, do you generally mod for performance, power, or uh, for aesthetic? Or do you try to find like a good balance of both, or just go all out and try to get the most out of everything you can? So, um, wow, I'm talking a lot. Um, it's all good. For, I, I don't know, see, that's the thing, because I spent a very, very, very long time building up a folder of um, 3D models. So for the kind of blaster that I would want to build, if I wanted to throw up like a Rapid Strike or a Raven or a Strife or you know, something that I'm inclined to build, uh, I can basically just not worry about it and print out all of the internal components I want. And so I've basically got my ideal components just ready to go. So I've done all of that. And then, so I just hit print, wire it up, and then it's, you know... The, the perfect performance for me, like what I like, like I don't like too much crush. I don't, you know, I, I would much prefer the accuracy. And so that's why my cage is like that. I've got like some printed parts to make the trigger of a strife smoother. Like I've got all the stuff that I want to make the blaster perfect for me internally. And so then that just leaves me with the aesthetics of it. And so when I make a build, it's, 99% of the time, because I had a really cool idea for what something would look like, and at this point, the internals are just sort of, I guess, an afterthought for me. Like, it's, I, I don't have to worry about them. I know what it's going to be, and I know how it's going to perform. Unless I'm doing something completely ridiculous. In which case, both, kind of? <laughs> then I try and find a balance between the aesthetics and the, the performance of the blaster. And usually I try when I'm designing a blaster to go for the core and the, the parts and how that's all going to work. And then I base the aesthetics around that. I'm a, I'm a balanced kind of man. I think not everyone has the, the capabilities of making things look really, really nice. I'm one of those people. I try. There's always things off and it bothers me. Whereas you have people like Tom who just make these gorgeous, gorgeous blasters uh, that look absolutely flawless. I think I try and make it them aesthetically pleasing, but usually that's it's not as good as I want it to be. So why not give it good performance as well? Make it something that's reliable and can also shoot really well under the limitations that you're given, like 130 FPS for end war or something. Um yeah. You know, and you have all the there. You have all the parts to basically make it however you want. And by the way, one thirty is such an easy cap to reach. It, yeah. It's kind of annoying. Now it's just replace the motors. Okay, done. Yeah. Um, I th you know I always try and go for for performance first, for reliability, get the rate of fire that I want, get it however you need to, and then aesthetics come. You know, you do aesthetics first, but performance is, like, the, the main thing. So, if, 
you know, if you can make it look pretty and shoot nice at the same time, you have a win-win combination. But uh, yeah, I, I, I'm more for practicality over aesthetics if I can. But if you can make if you can make the aesthetics work, more power to you. Cool. Um, so so End War 2018 was just announced. Speaking of which. Way to transition there. Um, yeah, I'm pretty good at this now. Are you guys excited for round two or round three? Uh, you guys are both at NVZ, um, though that was you know a little bit different. Anyway. Um, <laughs> An entirely different event that is completely <laughs> unrelated. <laughs> There's a reason we have End War now. <laughs> so, are you guys ready for round two of End War? Uh, what are you looking forward to? Um, expectations? Tell me about it. As long as that Dennis guy isn't there. I mean, I'm this is a kidding. cheap one, but, you know, like, as I always say, I'm always ready for round two. Like, Oh, God. I'm sorry. It just oh, Alice. Perfectly. <laughs> it's just so used to this. It's like, yup. <laughs> you know, the funny part is I don't really show it on my YouTube channel, so, like... Oh, no, it's just all on Discord. Yeah. <laughs> um... I'm excited for End War. Yeah, I'm super excited. And I, I'm. it would be very difficult for me to imagine a world where I didn't end up going. Like, again, it's all dependent on me finding a ride down there. But, like, I, I just, I mean, like, everybody I know is going, like, in the area. So, like, I'll just bum a ride off of one of them and then, you know, thank them forever. Ha <laughs> um, bum. God damn it, Bobo. <laughs> um, it's, yeah, so... Yeah, it, it's the it's the big nerfing event of the year. Um, it's it's a play... It's, like, the one time I actually get to meet... To see people. Like, uh, you know, I have friends from all over the... Um, the United States, a lot of whom don't live around here. So if I want to see them, it's either buy my plane ticket, fight me IRL... Or meet up at End War, and End War is usually the easier thing. So that's always exciting, is you get to see the people you don't see for like 365 days. Um, and like I said earlier, if it if the game sucks, at least you got to hang out with people you like. And FoamCon is so I, there's just something about FoamCon that I absolutely adore, and it's I, I guess it's just like seeing everyone bring stuff to show off and the companies being there uh dart zone were really cool and super friendly at end war 3d printed solid were brought like a the big 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 booth of stuff and were really nice containment crew uh were you know they, just everyone shows off their stuff it's kind of like bring the best you got try and bring the crowds and then it's that you know, people who actually watch your stuff who want to talk to you come up to you, and it's kind of weird. Oh, man. <laughs> I mean, like, I'm a pretty new channel. I don't really have that many subscribers, but the number of people that, like, came up to me and were like, yeah, I watch your channel, and I was like, oh, you're probably just being polite, and then they start, like, talking <laughs> about my channel, and I'm like, wait, people actually watch my garbage? Like, right? right? <laughs> I, I know that exact feeling. <laughs> it's like, why are you here? Drac is right next to me, or what? <laughs> yeah, like... <laughs> Out of Darts is over in the corner, and he's way cooler than I am. Yeah, exactly. Like, like, there's so many people that, like... Uh, but, I don't know, I, I did a piss-poor job of maintaining my booth. Because, Same. like... I don't know, I just, like... It kind of slowly got taken over by more and more people who were like, can I sit at your booth? And then I would be like, yeah, okay, I guess I'll just run around for a bit. And then I'd come back and they will have been gone for ages. And so I'll sit down and five minutes later, somebody will be like, oh, can I sit at your booth while I do this? And I'm like, yeah. So, so I don't know. Hopefully next year I will do a better job of having a booth. I'm not going to bother ringing my printer next year because I don't really care that much. I'm just going to like have just stuff show to show off. off and, yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I I really want to to live and actually use my blaster <laughs> next year. <laughs> I would like to get one dart fired out of my blaster. 
So for those of you that no, don't, know, don't talk about oh, it's so embarrassing. Bobo got ambushed no. in his car uh, on the first mission. No, it was it was it wasn't even first mission. We were not even in the game yet. Putting on our stuff. Uh, I misinterpreted the the car rules a little bit, and we saw Drac walk through the car the car lot with his his nemesis, and then like. Six minutes later, he comes up and tags us, and we're like, wait, what just happened? He's like, got turned! You're a zombie! Now it's like, I'm not even dressed. And it's then... Like, but you got your armband on. It's like, oh. And then, Bogo decided to try and lure me into a trap. what did I do? Um, oh, you were like, oh, Alice, I've got your stuff. You should come back no, to the car. No, 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 no. That wasn't a trap. I was legitimately calling you and Michelle and other people to come get their stuff that we went to the hotel to get. Yeah, and then Drac was hiding behind a car, and I shot him. Well, I mean, if you guys had come on time, things would have been I better. Mean, but y'all suck. Ouch. Yeah, you're the reason I died. Not really. <laughs> but, yeah, I was trying to get people to come to the car and get their stuff, and I was just like, oh my god, hurry up! The whole time, because I wanted to get dressed. Yep. Uh, it was dumb. Oh well. But I got to play zombie, which I usually never get to play until like three fourths of the way through the game, so it's not as exciting. Uh that was fun. I got a tag. That was fun. I got yeah. I, I helped a little bit. Mostly as a distraction or something the people for people to shoot at. So, I'm trying to remember when I got tagged. And I just rem I just remembered it was final stand. We were like some of the last people to get tagged out. Like <laughs> Just totally. Thanks for it. rubbing it in, Alice. Oh, I was just gonna say because, like, normally I I don't really get to play zombie that much, which sounds like a humble brag, but it isn't supposed <laughs> to be. Well, Dennis, will you be moderating this? Yes, next year? I'm staying on as a moderator for this upcoming year and the foreseeable future, unless something drastically changes or goes terribly but... wrong. But we need you for Go Slow. I'll definitely. I'm gonna uh, because we have more mods this year and more experience running such a big event. All of the mods will have more time to play and less yes. need to mod. So I'll definitely be playing more this year. Yes. I just want to go slow with everyone. Yes, I will definitely be going slow Amen. with you guys. Go slow is best slow. The the one mission I played this no year sense. was the one that most of Go Slow did not attend. So I was I was just not going slow. <laughs> I also only got to play one mission, so I decided to go extra ballsy the entire time, and I just chased down Drac for like half the mission, as as a human, uh, him being a zombie, and just like because he was always trying to sneak up, and I would always try to like get around him and stun him before he got a chance to sneak up on people. That was a lot of fun. I remember the entire crowd was like, "Dennis, get back here! You're gonna get tagged." And I was like, "This is my one mission. I want to play both sides." <laughs> So if you're unsure if you should go to end, the don't even question it, just go if you can. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I will plug End War till the end of forever. Um, between, honestly, uh, even though I was a mod, PhoneCon might have been my favorite part last year. <laughs> um, probably shouldn't be saying that as I helped design the game, but PhoneCon <laughs> was probably my favorite part, seeing everyone... Um, I was I was basically just a fan, like uh, most of the other people who attended FoamCon last year. I wasn't as tight knit in the 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 group of uh, all the people I like watching. Um, definitely at NVZ even more so. But uh, FoamCon, I got to meet all the people that I watch. Um, I definitely fangirled over Out of Darts for a little bit. Uh, it was my my one of my biggest goals was to get Out of Darts to notice me. Um, <laughs> what a weird thing. I love it. Um, but yeah, absolutely come to Endor. Uh, FoamCon is amazing. The game is so much fun. I think we put on an excellent game, and um, I think next year... It was better than NBZ. I think next year... Oh, yes. that Definitely better than next year. Oh, my God. Um, and I think next year it's going to be even better because we have uh, a bigger mod staff, more people, more experience running a game of this caliber. Um, we know what went wrong this past year. We know how to make it not go wrong this year. Um, 
every, we've gotten a lot of like great feedback and by great feedback I don't mean like um, everyone has been saying the game is great I mean great feedback is in useful feedback um, so we're gonna take all of that into account and make an even better game this year so yeah absolutely come out to end war if you're listening to this and not currently making plans to go to end war we're looking at you mr. Nathan <laughs> For real, Mr. David better come. I just want. There's so many people I want to meet. And like, oh yeah. I wish Tom would come. I I do too. I yeah, that would be wonderful. He could have his own booth, and I would sit there and try not to lick every single one of his blasters. That's weird. I just wanted out of darts okay, to but... notice me. I never wanted to lick any of his things. <laughs> Are you sure about that? A little. Just a little bit. Yeah, it was really nice to see out of darts again. And he he really fit in. Fitted? Fit in? Yeah, that's right. Wow, I feel dumb now. He really fit in with the whole aspect of it. It was cool. Alright, um, speaking of things that are happening in the future... Um, what is in the future for your guys' channels and for Alice, I guess, your products? Bobo, I don't think you have any products, or unless you have products you want to announce on this podcast that are coming up in the future, I guess. Uh, the Bobo mag release. Oh, no, that mag release isn't Bobo. The Bobo rev triggers, though. Hey. I yeah. like that people like what I did. It's really weird. I mean, I don't, but I recognize that other uh. people do. Get right, scrub. Oh, well, it's not like your opinion matters, so. Um. That was mean. Huh. Um. Future of my channel. Uh, I just released the video on Doku, and that is, at least in my opinion, the best vid build video I've ever done. And so I would like to move more in that direction, more into, um more into doing really cool builds and really cool videos of the really cool builds. Um, I think, um, I think I'd, I'd really like to sort of step up the, well, I'd, I'd love to step up the video quality, but we'll, we'll see, we'll see if I can actually do that. Um, uh, as for future products, I honestly don't know. Uh, when I started, I didn't start making products for other people. I made the products for myself because they're what I wanted. And then a bunch of people wanted them. So I started making them and then um, it got a little too much for me to handle. So uh, I sort of slowed it down and stopped doing it as much. And uh, I actually just last week I had my other printer um, it just completely started failing prints. And it was about that time where I sort of started to take a look at the prints that it was completing and decided that I wasn't happy enough. I mean, they're, they're fine, but they're not something that I want to put out there and say, yeah, this is my work. Like, they're good, but they're not good enough. Um, so that dropped me down to one printer and it's the one that's really loud and noisy and sits in my bedroom. So I have shut down my shop for now, um, which I think is fine because most people don't know I have a shop and um, it's actually a shop on my Facebook page. And I have people comment on my Facebook page, where is the shop uh, directly <laughs> underneath the big shop now button. So clearly I'm doing something wrong here. Like, um, but no, I guess I just, I'm really moving towards doing commissions and YouTube and YouTube about the commissions and just personal builds and trying to, trying to do stuff like that. Cause that's what I really enjoy doing. And I really don't enjoy, you know, sitting there monitoring a 3d print for days at a time. Well, most people don't know about Alice's shop. Most people don't know about my Patreon. Anyways, um, let's see. Oh, yeah, see I might here. do that, too. I don't know. <laughs> um, Wait, you have a Patreon? Yes. Huh. See, see what I mean? <laughs> Links are in the description. And sometimes I put them as an end card. Sometimes. Um, 
for me? Uh, make video. Make good video. More review. Make stuff. Do things. Go place. And be unreliable for sure. That's like number one priority right there. That's about it, really. Uh, don't yeah, know what he said. Uh, there's some stuff in the works. I'm not going to mention it right now because I want it to be a surprise surprise. Um, but for things that I'm working on, I'm always having some sort of weird project up. Uh, I need to make... Uh, I have a rapid stripe that I'm making right now, just like a sleeperish build using some parts from one of the SCNC members. I have a long shot project that I'm really stoked about. Um, I have pictures of it up on my Instagram. And then there's a nemesis that I have a, a PWM in that's like a practical build, but the shell won't close for some reason and I can't figure it out. So that's frustrating. But, uh, that's about it. I'm for really, me. I'm really excited to see those videos Bobo in spring of 2020. Yeah, I mean, it takes a long time. Each frame is about a day's worth. So you do the math. <laughs> is, it's like the uh, the boyhood of Nerf. Is the future of Bobo videos stop motion? Every every day you take a picture of one frame and tie it all together at the end of the year? Uh, I, you know what? I want to do that for something. It will look like crap, but I can say it's artistic. And people will be like, oh, yeah, of course. That's yeah, don't you I have, like, an art degree or something? No. <laughs> I just oh. went to art school. <laughs> well, okay, you can say you went to art school, and then it's professional yeah. and I mean, the, the most I got out of it was I know how to, to take a painting and make it full of metaphors that don't exist within it. <laughs> that's, that's a, just talk about humanity and use the word juxtaposition a few times, and you're good. Boba Lolo, art critic. Yep. I can uh, I can judge your your blaster work for a fee. I can tell you what it means. Is that one of your Patreon uh, levels of contribution? No, but it should be. One dollar. Oh, I will look at your build and tell you it's shit. No, that's doesn't about matter a $10. how good it is. That's a ten dollar. Just an automated response. <laughs> it's shit. <laughs> Looks K. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't know. There's not much to talk about at the moment. Uh, when <laughs> when January comes around, and I start freaking out, uh, freaking out about what I'm gonna bring to End War. That's when uh, that's when things will happen. All right. So everyone, look forward to January. By January, we mean like the day before End War, when that January video gets uploaded. Oh, stop it! I have. Uh... At least I upload videos, Dennis. This counts. That doesn't make sense. You're the one that doesn't upload videos. But he doesn't have as many as I do. As many videos total? Uh, yes. I'm actually not sure about that. <laughs> I've only been doing this for, like, this summer. Wow. Get Oops. good, scrub. <laughs> Man, I have, like, three primaries that are, like, basically finished that I have not done videos on. Like, Well, then get to it. I know. Oh, there was one that I was supposed to release today, but I need to figure out some code first. Oh my god, Which, so unreliable. There's one guy who uh, heard that somewhere, I don't remember where, and just keeps posting on my videos, when are we going to see that, and why did you have to write code for it? And he, he watches like every video I'm in, so I know he's watching this, and soon, eventually, I don't know. Weird. Hey, hey, Alice. Alice. What do you want? Hurry up with the video. Yep. Why? Hurry up. I'm going to message you every five minutes saying that. Do you want to, do you want to help me with some of that code, Bobo? I don't, I don't know what type of code it is. He can critique the code for its artistic value. Yes, I can. <laughs> I can, I can tell you. It's its relationship to Blade Runner and how it symbolizes humanity's clash with nature and society. Good. Ten dollar Patreon. That, that's what you get. 
All right. Uh, moving on from your futures, let's talk about the future of Nerf. What are you guys excited for? That's uh, anything, uh, any products that you're excited for that are coming up from uh, third-party makers or uh, events, that sort of thing. What What are you guys excited for in the future of Nerf here? There was a post by I'm stalling the Blaster Forge. Of a uh, a 3D printed bullpup shell thing that looked pretty cool, and uh, the Omega kit looks looks interesting. I want to see what that's all about. Well, I mean, I know what it's about, but I want to see. I want to see their uh, what's the word? Can't think of the word. I want to see how well they they do it. Um. I don't know. I think this sort of touches on something I was talking about earlier in that uh, I, don't, I don't really buy many products just because I like to make stuff myself. Um, and, you know, that's not to say that there aren't like incredible products on the market and coming to market, but, you know. I just I just like doing my own thing. So I also just what people come up with. Uh, the Reddit contests are always fun to watch because it adds new creativity to the hobby. So it's always cool to see people's takes on different like uh, lists of what they have to do to fit a certain criteria, which I like. It, it keeps things fresh and lively so you know the hobby doesn't come to a kind of a stalemate where it's just strife strife rapid strike here's another retaliator wow i mean those are fine and dandy but i need more i need more do you feel like we're moving towards that like staleness or do you think that we're going to keep seeing all these like interesting diverse builds there's a very fine line with that because there are cool builds that use the same blasters over and over again. But I, I'm one of the people on the side for Stravens where it's like, Oh great. Another Straven. It's like when you see it enough times, it gets boring, but there's still things you can do to it to make it different. Um, I, I, I feel like the, the big integration stuff, like when the stampede came out, there was so much room on the front of it, and it was also a time where like integrations were really picking up. Uh, that was I, I would I would argue that's kind of like the golden era of integrations was like Stampede, Swarmfire, put them together. Stampede, Swarmfire, Stampede. Why not add a Vulcan to it or something like that? Um, I, I I think along shameless with shameless Bobo, shameless. What? <laughs> it's uh, I feel like also it has to do with the prices of Nerf Blasters now. They're getting really expensive for the stuff yeah. that people want. Like a Nemesis is $100. So yeah. I feel like a lot of people don't want to take the risk of possibly destroying one and accidentally getting it wrong. So that's why they stick with things like the Strife, the Retaliator, the Rapid Strike, because they're the, the lower-priced items. Um... But it, that takes it back to the the whole like kits. It's like as long as kits keep coming out, we're going to be seeing stuff. And you know, you can add cosmetic kits. You can add interesting new internal stuff that just tweaks it to the point where it's more interesting than say the last one that you saw. Um, but I, I feel like it is a very fine line between things that are interesting and things that make the hobby more stagnant because it's not. I don't want to say stagnant in total because people are creative people do things it's cool to see how people do stuff and how they paint things but if you see the same things over and over and over and over and over and over and over again eh, it gets a little boring so um i don't know personally like i really like building flywheel blasters and i guess for me um i i'm in Canada and Nerf doesn't really show up that much outside of Toys R Us. So like 
basically you have to pay the tax for being in Canada and wanting Nerf as well as the Toys R Us tax. So, like, if you want a blaster, so things end up being ridiculously expensive here. So, I guess for me, I'm kind of drawn back to things like the Rapid Strike and the Strife, because it's basically the cheapest thing that you can get that is flywheel and interesting. And so if you want semi-auto, you go Strife, and if you want full auto, you go Rapid Strike. So, that's kind of where I'm at. Um, And it's kind of unfortunate, because it does get really stale doing strifes over and over and over again. I just, you know. And trying to find ways to make them not boring can lead you down a, uh, like a a spiral of insanity in a way. Making an entire. How can I make it different? How can I make it stand out? How can I do this? And it's like, Oh gosh, I'm more interested in the things that are being made for stuff than I am people making things with it. Yeah. That makes sense. Like the uh I am super excited for the OFP eclipse. I think it looks I it looks it looks ridiculous and I'm gonna throw money at it. Um, I think somebody like theorized that a while back and said, you know, the only way you could get better results with concavity on flywheels was if you did like less than a millimeter spacing between the top of the wheels. Um I know Taruk was working on his uh his high con uh design where it was basically kind of the same thing where yeah. the wheels just completely surround the dart yeah i believe it and if, if what's what's really cool to me is like if you think about the timeline of it all it's only been a little while maybe like two two and a half years since um like the dr snickers cage came out and now we have yeah. all this like ridiculous like here's a theory now i'm gonna build a cage based around it and oh yeah it shoots like 150 feet yeah i think that's really cool so i'm more interested in the stuff being made than the stuff that people are making with it i've um i guess for the the future of nerf and i get i guess this kind of ties into the last question as well the, the future of nerf products um, something I have been really, really, really pushing to try and do is to try and make metal flywheel cages. I haven't said anything about this, so this will be the Ooh. first. But um, they're going to be more like Snickers than something like uh, the artifact cages. Like, they're not going to be... Wanty. They're not going to be cheap. They're not going to be simple. I don't know. Um, they're kind of blocky. Um, uh, maybe <laughs> I'm looking at a red cage right now. I'm just like, it's a rectangle. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I already have a design mocked up. I think Bobo has seen the design. Um, uh, but, uh, no, it's, I would like to do stuff that's more, um, it would be higher priced. It would be more Snickers because it would have to be quite expensive in order for me to justify doing it. Um, People are getting but, used to the higher price points in a way, yeah. Uh, which, um, which is nice because you can do more specific stuff. But yeah. also, you know, I hate my wallet. <laughs> it's good. Yeah. Doku it's, cost me four hundred dollars, like out of pocket, woo. and I put another four hundred in labor into it. Jeez. So, yeah, like, I know that feeling. Yeah. Uh. Someone, this is just future nurse, someone needs to make a lever action r- rival shooter. I, I just, I want to see it done. That'd be cool. Yeah, like a uh, like little load the, the bottom feeding tube, lever action, it loads into the top. It, like, uh, basically Mr. Heath's shotguns, but for a rival. Like yeah. A little repeater. That'd be so cool. That That's what I really want from rival. Please nerf, please do. Or Mr. Heath, I know you're <laughs> capable. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, what what type of blaster do you think? Like, what 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 blaster would be feasible that you would also want? Me? Yes, you. Actually, um, both of you. Actually, I'm just gonna. There was something I was gonna add, and I forgot. Uh, that was the other thing that I was comparing to Snickers about the cages that I'm working on. Uh. I, I will be making them myself. So oh. um, 
there won't be uh like it won't be like a batch order done so that means that i can do one for like different blasters and that's not going to be a problem and that was why i was sort of mentioning it because then you know you can make a demolisher with it with like a metal cage because right now that's incredibly difficult unless you just go snickers um but no what what blaster would i like to see that's feasible mm, that's feasible um i'm not sure honestly i mean uh i would like a blaster that has the absolute bare minimum i don't care but has a rapid strike pusher in it so that i can buy it for twenty dollars and take out the rapid strike <laughs> pusher um yeah, I'm not really sure. I honestly, I guess back onto the the future of Nerf. Um, I think that we, or I would like to see more stuff pushing into the way that prophecy is like, mm. like it's compatible with a retaliator. A like modulus that's not a Nerf modulus. Oh, well, more so just that it's an entire blaster that was manufactured by, you know, uh, an, an aftermarket company. It, it's it's a hobby-grade piece of equipment as opposed to a toy that we've upgraded to the point where it's, you know, half dangerous. Like, um, I think I would like to see a lot more of that, a lot more stuff built for the hobby. Um, and like we've, we've seen some stuff like that before with, uh, uh, Explorer or X jet or however that I don't, I'm not good at that. Uh, um, jet X jet X. Oh, yeah. Was... <laughs> or something. I don't know. They, they had some company weirdness that I did not pay attention to. Um, yeah. but they were doing it, but I really think that prophecy um, is, I guess, better, because it's, I don't know, it feels like more of a finished product than uh, the Exus. Um, but I would like to see more of that. I would like to see hobby-grade blasters made by aftermarket companies and the, the community that are bases to build off of. Um, Yeah. I honestly don't really care what Nerf per puts out at this point. I just hope that it's more of the same so that we don't, you know, lose rapid strike pushers because they're uh, nice. The day we lose the rapid strike will be a dark, dark time. Yeah. Yeah. I like rapid strikes too much. Well, I, I mean, it's, go just, the hyper fire. it's just a really nice pusher. Like, oh, yeah. I'll, I'll take it over. Uh, a conveyor belt any day. So yeah, I don't care what they do in the future, just um, please leave me with my rapid strikes and I guess strifes. Strifes are alright. Oh, I'm so strike. happy that they brought back the Raven and Bobo's gonna Boo. sit there and look at my pile of Boo. five of them. Boo. Five Burn Raven Ravens. fires. If and you're he's going to go, this, oh, we should put them in a wood chipper. I mean, that's really the only thing that they're good for is becoming yeah. pulp. Yeah. Plastic confetti pulp. Yep. Disgusting. Future confetti. Disgusting. But no, I'm really happy about that because it's small and it fits me ergonomically. But Gross. the problem is the pusher is disgusting. So <laughs> I might have something about that. Um, All ravens must die. Dennis saw me running my my raven fire at uh, the Waterloo game. What did you think about that? I haven't put out the video on that. That was supposed to be today, but uh, I really dig it. Uh, I hope you worked out those issues that you were having. Um, but I'm sure as soon as you do, it'll be a masterpiece, and I'm excited to see the video on it. Um, yeah, other than those uh, minor issues that you had i think i think it's a great blaster um minor issues my battery almost exploded <laughs> whoa what yeah um 
Yeah, so basically what happened, actually I don't know what happened, but one cell of the of my 2S just completely depleted. Um That's not good. Yeah. Um which then caused the microcontroller which was running the entire blaster to um crash and so it crashed with all of the gates in the position that they crashed in so when the voltage dipped below a certain level because i was hitting the rev trigger the rev trigger ended up by extension crashing the blaster so the rev trigger got stuck on so i had to pull the battery mid game and then reinsert it that's not good yep it was it was good. It was fun times. <laughs> um, but uh, no, that that issue has been more or less worked out because we determined it was the battery that was causing that issue, and uh, I, I instead of getting a new two S, I have now ordered some voltage regulators so I can run a three S setup, which is what I intended to run anyway. So that problem should be solved. Woo. <laughs> All right. Uh, if you guys are good on that question, um, that's all I have. Do you guys have anything you want to say before we uh, end the show? Uh, uh, I don't know. Um... Nope, I got nothing. Um, Nerf is cool. Get out of Dennis's house. What? Because at the end of my videos, I sometimes say get out of my house. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Get out of Dennis's only house. Only 90s kids remember. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, before this devolves uh, any further... Uh, <laughs> Oh man, who's a millennial? Raise your hand, raise your avocado toast. <laughs> okay, we're we're just gonna end the episode here. Uh, Dab on the fidget spinners. Thank you guys all for listening. Thank you Bobo and Coat <laughs> Duck for being on the show here today. Um, all of the links to where you can find them on various social media platforms will be in the description of this video and or SoundCloud thing. Um, don't don't forget all the YouTube channels we listen. Yes. To. Yeah, you have to name every single one of them. Uh, if they send me a list, they'll be in the description. No, this is your job. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> I'll list like one per person, maybe. Boo. Maybe. Anyway, thank you guys for listening. Uh, thanks for sticking around for an hour forty minutes of this. Um, we can do better next time. Oh, you're not going to edit this? Oh, okay. I think we can go for two hours 30 next Honestly, time. Honestly. I think we could go to for two hours 30 this time. Oh, okay. Let's talk about... Nerf drama. Ooh! Right, cutting it off now. Cutting, Killer! It is cutting. here! Last! <laughs> right into the moon. Ending this right now before this goes any further. I heard Dennis is a butthole IRL. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about Dennis's butthole. <laughs> Join us next week for <laughs> our ever increasingly <laughs> timed videos. Next week's probably going to be like three or four hours. <laughs> four hours. Four hours. Four hours. Honestly, maybe maybe we'll, we'll do we'll like a special where we five. have everyone we know. Can we do a twenty-four hour? Yeah. Marathon? Okay. Yeah. Someday. We'll get really deep into detail with it. Really deep into Dennis's deep. buckle. <laughs> All deep. right, I'm cutting this off. Thank you guys for watching. <laughs> See you next week with I have no idea what because apparently I can't plan these things more than a day in advance. See you next week. Bottle. Do you guys want to say bye or something? Bottle. Oh, uh, yeah, butthole. <laughs> Okay, bye. <laughs> We're so mature. Don't, 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 don't.